Let's unlock the secrets of brand differentiation and overcome the forces that prevent us from truly standing out. You're in for a treat. In today's episode, welcome to the Brand Gravity Show, where we merge the worlds of branding and psychology. I'm your host, Kate Putnam, your guide in the world of psychology-driven branding. And our exploration today involves diving into the power of distinctiveness in branding and confronting the inner hurdles that hinder our path to being visible and to being unique. With us today is Robert Patton, founder of Creative Agency Success, a consulting firm laser focused on enabling creative agencies to scale. Robert stands out as an analytical and deeply inquisitive leader renowned for crafting solutions that not only uplift and grow companies, but also enhance the founders' lives. Two-time international best-selling author, Robert's passion for sharing transformative strategies has empowered countless creative agency leaders to experience growth and fulfillment. His unique insights have the potential to redefine your perspective on brand differentiation, help you identify and overcome those hurdles that stop you from standing out as your authentic self. Let's dive into this enlightening conversation with Robert to uncover and harness the key to brand differentiation. Let's go. Thank you so much for being on the Brand Gravity Show. I'm excited to talk about carving out your place in the market. Can you start just by introducing yourself and, and who you work with? Yeah, my name is Robert Patton. I am the founder of Creative Agency Success, and I work with agencies to help them be able to carve out their own section of the market and be able to scale their business. And a lot of it has to do with kind of operational oriented components to it, but ultimately how to scale. Amazing. Why is differentiation important? Well, largely, and I'm going to speak specifically about agencies, but like we were speaking about before jumping into recording, it does apply to businesses and service oriented businesses more broadly. But largely, there's so many agencies out there. And for those that are not agency owners, there's so many other businesses that are like yours that are out there. And specifically to agencies, there's 350,000 of them in the US. <laughs> and this creates a lot of issues for lead generation, for sales. It leads into requiring and a lot of people asking for discounts. And what, what the experience is for your ideal client is they have no way to distinguish you. They largely, and one of the things I will have clients do when they first start working with me is, I want you to take your actual website and I want you to take your top three or five competitors and remove the branding, remove the imagery and look at just the copy. Do you sound any different or do you sound exactly the same? And if you sound exactly the same, how is it that your ideal client is going to choose you? And if they do choose you, the only thing that they're able to actually dis distinguish between is price, or maybe that they like you a little more, right? Mm -hmm. And that is not a great way to build a scalable business and being able to actually attract who you want to work with. And it kind of leaves you back footed, being able to grow. 100%. I think this happens in a lot of industries, chiropractors, designers, photographers, and everything in between. What mm -hmm. has been your path to finding your own differentiating factor? Interestingly, we were talking about it very briefly before we were going into recording, but it actually happened in a podcast. So I was being interviewed on a podcast and I had this kind of piece of shame for me. And I was asked a question of where did you go to school in the podcast? And I did not actually proclaim that quite loudly because, I mean, I had worked in public accounting for a number of years. Most of my career had been in accounting at that point. And I got a commercial photography degree. I have a fine art degree. And going to school for an art and working in accounting, to me, was this kind of piece of shame because it wasn't something that was prestigious for the career that I was in. And I avoided talking about it. I answered the question truthfully and it was this then further exploration that I had to kind of go through myself to, well, why do I actually have shame about what I chose? Because I enjoyed it. It actually did help me. It helped me foster a part of my brain that otherwise I wasn't born with. And I needed to learn a little bit more. It helped me be able to more creatively solve problems. I learned after school that it wasn't a career that I 
was going to pursue because I, it is so far away from who I am as a person. But I learned afterwards that it actually was, and in that personal exploration, and then also in messaging and just recognizing, it tied me to who I serve quite closely. Right, I understand them more. I understand them better because when I went to school for that, I did have a business in that as well. I had a, a photography business for a while, and it allowed for me to really connect with my ideal client in a different way and understand them better. It also kind of stemmed into my why, really. I'm married to a fine artist, and I absolutely am just enthralled by the creative mind. I believe them to, it's so far different from who I am as a person. I'm very linear and analytical of a mind, of a person, not just a mind, I'm, I'm more than the mind. But anyway, the, it's, I see the creative mind being society and the world's pathway to improvement, to invention, to growing. And I want to be able to help with what I was born with, the analytical, very clear, linear thinking to help the piece that a lot of creatives do have as a, a piece that is that they tend to lack a bit and be able to utilize and create kind of this yin and yang oriented piece. And so it's really built in now to my messaging is that I do really understand who they are and that I can help them with being a support to the things that they were not born with. Mm. Do you have any case studies or stories about clients that thrived once they found what their differentiating factor was? Yeah, I mean, largely. So I'm going to actually talk about a client that was in a place where they weren't and they were trying to explore it. And then when they actually did find it, how much things went into place. So I'm going to talk about two of them. But one of them, when we first started working together, was going down a path their career had been in branding and they were going down that path and were selecting out a, a niche specifically and what their differentiator was. And the piece that kind of was missing is what I was just talking about, that like built-in why, right? They were not really energized by it. So they were able to, to grow. They were attracting the clients that they were looking for, right? But it wasn't actually making them excited. So they were not growing to the tune that they wanted to. Eventually, the agency recognized that that wasn't really what he wanted to do and went down a path of working with founders and the energy component behind where he ended up feeling afterwards allowed for him to actually have the energy, the motivation, the excitement, and to want to work with those people more closely. And largely that enthusiasm, that passion is magnetic and allowed for him to be able to attract his ideal client, have a lot more fun with what he was doing and actually turn what was up until that point for him a bit of a thorn in his side, the business that he had created, into something that actually fueled his life and allowed for him to feel excited about it. Very kind of similar story, very recent client. We've only been working together for two to three months, so there's still lots to, to, to build from there. But for her, she had a lot of experience working with contractors. And we were in a conversation about three weeks ago and just like, how quickly it snapped and changed for her. One of the things I mentioned to her is like, you know, you, I, I'm not a believer, but she's very faith-based. And I mentioned to her in a conversation, it's like, you know, you talk about your faith and you light up and I see you smile from ear to ear. Why are you not working with faith-based organizations? And she was like, that's an option? That's something I can do. It's like, yeah, it, it is. It 100% is. There, there's, so, there's a myriad of different options out there, and that absolutely is one of them. The following day, she changed the copy on her site and then started reaching out to what would be her ideal client. And the amount of response that she got, she went from, from getting very kind of trickled in responses to her marketing campaigns to 80% response rates. <laughs> And is just inundated now with sales calls and is just growing like gangbusters right now. And again, it's just fueled and excited. So, you know, largely to me, I think that being an entrepreneur is a very risky thing to do, you know. And if we're not going to be able to have fun while we do it, then why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 
the example or the metaphor that pops into my mind is like, imagine you have this list of the perfect partner. You write it all down on paper. You're with the person. They check all the boxes, but you just don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Like you'd be doing both of you a disservice to keep or to stay with that person. You have to mm -hmm. have that magnetic X factor. And the magical thing is that it, like you can feel it and it shows in your marketing, it shows in your brand, it shows in the way that you talk to your clients when it exists. So you have to chase that if you want to have the most fun, like you said, and also the most success in your business. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. What are some of the practical steps that an agency owner or any of the other clients they work with, what should they take to decide what that factor is or what that thing is for them? So I, I, I to step them through kind of a, a process, but the first step that I have them do is actually just take a white sheet of paper and a quiet space and write down their story. Mm. No filter, just write down where they've been and every memory that comes to mind and just go through and write it all out. And after they've done that, to go through and take a highlighter and highlight the those sort of key defining moments both in their lives and in their career that allows for them to see there's going to be a pathway that they'll see within that story that allows for them to understand what is that 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 passion component to them why did they end up where they are today i mean for you and speaking to an agency right there's or to any business owner there's a myriad of different things you could have done thousands of possibilities of what you could have done in your career but you're here you chose this of everything else and there's a reason why you gravitated towards this and you may not know this like hey this is why i ended up here but if you spend the time to quietly reflect on your own story you you will see and you'll actually be able to uncover that by spending some time kind of looking inward the 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 thing that i i i say to them when they we start going through this exercise is that what the vast majority of people do when trying to determine their differentiator is they look to at their competitors first they go through market research first and it's like how do you find your differentiator by looking at other people <laughs> it's like that doesn't make any sense. You have no idea how refreshing that is to hear. And especially from you, who is more like logic brain systems thinking, I feel like that is the common advice that people hear. It's like, okay, like look for, look at your market, see where the, the gap in the market is. But if you don't naturally fill that gap, it's going to feel like you're pushing a boulder up a mountain when you're trying to build your business. It is so much more fruitful to look inside to figure out what that is. What are some common roadblocks or challenges that people come into when they're trying to incorporate that differentiator into their brand? I mean, largely, there's a, a couple of components, right? The first, I will say, is our own internal monologue, the belief system that that's even possible, right? Like where I was talking about with my own story is that I had my own personal shame belief system that where my life had been and what I had done was something that I shouldn't have been proud of. And now I recognize that it's part of me and it's part of my story and it's something I should be proud of. Is that, that I would say is the primary initial blocker, right? Is that if people feel cautious, right? It's a kind of whether you jump in the deep end, kind of headfirst oriented kind of belief system, right? Or if you're kind of just going in really slowly, it can be a, a lot more painful and a lot colder. <laughs> so it, that I would say is the first first hurdle that people need to jump through is like, is this right for me? Can I do this? And am I okay as who I am? The, mm -hmm. the other piece is, and you would need to, we'd have to confirm it with the market, but largely I would say getting out there into the market is one of the fastest ways to find out whether we're serving a market need. But it's whether that actually does serve something in the market that is necessary if there is a need in the market and that you're filling that gap. So that is the other piece. And sometimes people are not thinking about, it's like, hey, here's the thing that I want to do. And it's this kind of just like slight nuance to what a lot of people kind of miss really, right? Is how do you translate what it is that is your passion, your excitement into the the need that someone else has and how do you create the alignment between what you're excited about and what that other person needs is another sort of major hurdle that I see happen quite a lot. It's just understanding the the 
the tactic versus the outcome. Um, yeah. And a lot of people are talking about, and you'll see on loads of agency sites of like, where's your service? And then here's like this Costco receipt of everything <laughs> that they do. And it's like, no, please take that down. Yes. So I'm reading between the lines from your two previous stories that you shared, but it sounds like if we can find a small way to test bringing our authentic selves and our story and our why into our brand and into our messaging, that might be a really great way to create more of that sense of safety. So you mentioned that you kind of often mentioned it on a podcast when you were asked. You mentioned that the client, the new client of yours, maybe she shared an email or changed some copy on her website and then got to see how the market responded. Do you have any other advice for kind of like testing the waters or seeing what's going to stick once mm -hmm. you decide or once you have that awareness of what you want to bring in? Yeah. I mean, largely talk to people, right? I mean, you'd be surprised on how willing people are to actually have a conversation with you. And I do have clients go through and do that is, you know, go and reach out to a couple of people that are your ideal client and just ask for 15 minutes of their time. Ask them questions of, you know, does this resonate with you? Why would you buy? Why would you not? Does this serve a need? How are you currently solving this challenge right now? And really understanding how that kind of lands for them. Largely, you can turn that into a sales conversation, which might be an entirely other podcast episode, but is go and talk to people. You know, I, I think that a, a lot of times we're very gun shy around, and I don't know that I like that phrase, but we're, we're very shy of, of going out there and actually talking to people to learn, right? And I think that knowledge is power. And the more that you have and understand what and how that actually translates, it when it comes and kind of just going off into a, a little bit of a tangential thought on it, it's a lot of people, I think, miss that in a sales conversation and in a marketing conversation that I that I believe that the easiest pathway to working with someone that you're meant to work with and that you can ultimately help is not by telling them the reasons why you can help them, but actually, and I talk about it and inspired by a, a mentor and colleague of mine, he refers to it as the warm chocolate chip cookies. And it's like the, the thing that, that you're doing either way, you know, I, you can come along for the ride, but I'm going to do this no matter what, here's my why, here's what I do, here's how I do it. And it's something that I am driven to do and you're welcome to come along on my journey. And if someone sees what you're passionate about and what you want to accomplish and their goal is alongside that and in alignment with that. There's safety for your prospective client or your prospective buyer when they see that alignment, when it's very clear to them that what you want and what they want are essentially the same. Yeah. 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 I love that. Do you have any tips, tactics? So once we understand that that is the strategy that we want to employ, do you have any advice for effectively communicating that to the market? Like, how do you tell people about your warm chocolate chip cookies? I mean, there's there's lots of, it depends on the market that you're going after, right? And, yeah. and here's where there's tons of nuance. You have to think about who it is that you are going to be talking to and how it is that they communicate. I mean, so for example, for me to be, you know, sending out emails to contractors, for example, is likely not the best way that I'm going to be getting in front of them because they tend to be more in the field. You're more you're better off with maybe a text message campaign or maybe outbound calling or doing some more partnership oriented affiliate model kind of marketing. So to get your message out there, it's really understanding where your ideal client's eyes already are. And a lot of people, I think, kind of try to swim upstream here where they're just following whatever tactic they saw online. And I'm going to go do this because it worked for someone else. And I would say take a pause and think about whether that actually applies well for you. I will say here and I will say, and I've said many dozens of times that pretty much every lead generation and marketing strategy does work if you spend the time to actually refine it and get it out there. What a lot of people fail at is that they stop too early before it even had the result. And they're just, they're looking for the easy button and if entrepreneurship was easy, more people would be successful and more people would, would 
would accomplish what they're looking for. It's you have to sometimes go slower to go faster in the end. Yeah. Yeah. I might be going a little bit backwards with this question, but I would love to still ask it. How do we know when we have reached a good differentiator? How do we know if we're different enough? That's a good question. The I've got two kind of minds about it. First, I would say whether it feels right for you, the first thing, and I'm going to quote a client of mine when we were going through a kind of vision workshop exercise for a couple of days. And the way that he kind of rephrased what I was saying is he referred to it as making his tummy smile. I love that. You know, that like butterfly feeling that you get inside <laughs> yourself, you know? So it's like you have to get it to the place where your tummy smiles and that you get that butterfly. Like it, it feels right. Like it gives you the warm and fuzzies. I would say that once you've got there, you, you're likely in the right place. And until you figure that out, let's continue to spend more time and explore. As far as the making sure that you're different enough from from every other of your competitors out there. I mean, I don't I don't know that I'm overly concerned about that to be completely mm. honest with you. I yeah. I don't I believe that we are going to work with the people that we are meant to in the first place for any service oriented business. It's maybe a, a it's a bit different when you're talking about widgets and selling of a, a tangible product. If you are speaking to your authentic self and you are speaking from a place of passion and excitement and from those warm and fuzzies and you're really truly wanting to help someone and really truly wanting to serve who you're there to serve, then they will they will come. You will you will work with the people that you're intended to work with. And it's I, I, I believe and I see more frequently that when people do not are not successful is when they're trying to put it on, right? When they're trying to be something that ultimately they're not. And that I, I believe to be more the problem than finding that like defined distinction. 100%. I've told this story a bunch of times, so I won't retell it. But when I first started in business, I believed that I needed to model what was already successful. And mm. long story short, I fell on my face because that doesn't work. It does not mm -hmm. work to try to just be somebody else in that pursuit of success. You have to find your own way. For Especially for agency owners, where can they go to find more about you, your business, how you help people? Yeah. So I actually put together a, a page for everyone on this podcast, creativeagencysuccess.com forward slash brand gravity. So I put three different things there. So I created a, a guide to put together your capabilities presentation. So it's kind of how to go about putting together a presentation that is actually about you, about what you're passionate about, so that you can create that alignment and get your ideal client excited. There's also a free copy of my book, The Practical Agency, that's about how to set up all the foundational elements of your agency so that you can scale. And if you're in a place where you're stuck and you want to explore whether the direction you're headed is going to be beneficial for you or have some questions, there's a link there as well to book a, a chat that we can talk about where you are and the pathway for success for you. Amazing. That's incredibly generous. Thank you. We will put that in the show notes. And then final question for you, Robert, for everybody that's listening, if you could install like one kernel of either belief or learning for them to walk away with, what would you want them to know? The the story that you were just talking about, I think is rings really true, is that when you think about success within your within your business, that following what someone else has done will only get you to 90, maybe 95% of that success. And while that sounds like a large percentage, I want to hit that, that 97% of small businesses never actually get to the goal that they're looking to get to, right? So it's that 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 nuance in it that is incredibly important. And why finding community, why finding support, why finding, there's so many instances myself where I could not see the forest in, amongst the trees, right? And that it was just like this little thing that someone else pointed out to me. It's like, well, here's the obvious answer that's directly in front of you. Find the community, your tribe, the people that can call you out in the moments that you need to be called out. Find inspiration and motivation and support when you need it as well. You're not alone. We can't do this alone. Not a single one of us, even though we've been told to be independent, we aren't. And it is, it's not a thing that you're going to accomplish. So find your community and get the support you need. 
I love it. Thank you so much. I love this conversation and all of the wisdom, all of the stories that you shared. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Brand Gravity Show. I would love for you to reflect, take some time to think about it. What is something that you have been hiding from bringing into your brand that potentially could actually be an asset? What are some of those parts of your story that you've been neglecting or not sharing for whatever reason? I would love to hear what those are or even just to have you do that exercise on your own to create some of that awareness around some of your key differentiators that may be hiding in your story. Thank you so much for listening to The Brand Gravity Show. I will see you in the next episode.